You might not know this about me, but I'm a big appreciator of the map Arena. Arena is the second most played map yes. in Age of Empires 2, uh, from what I've seen, at least in online games. Number one is Arabia, but just behind that is Arena. And, you know, Arena is a map that doesn't incorporate any hills. You start with stone walls. It is very beginner friendly, but at a higher level, it's a little bit more about like the mid game and the late game strengths of civilizations. And it gives people a lot of time to think on how a civil, how the matchup is and what you can do with your sim. Whereas on some other maps, you maybe don't have the time to, to be able to think about things. So you guys know me, I talk a lot, right? Um, and so arena is perfect for me. <laughs> I get to break down all these nitty gritty little details for you. And hopefully you guys enjoy that. So we've got two high level arena players, two players that would definitely fall into the category of clowns. Um, that's what arena players so excitedly call themselves. Uh, we've got John Slow, who if I had to make a list of arena players would probably be my favorite arena player. Uh, he's not the best player on arena. But he's a player who's been around for 15, 20 years, uh, formerly known as Terror, and he's slow. Uh, he is not fast at all. He's one of the slowest players to be above the 2K rank, but with good strategy and good decision-making and good understanding of the game, he finds himself, uh, at least at the time of this game, 2100 rank, which is at the bottom right of the screen. John Slow is playing as the Huns, uh, and we'll get to that and talk about the Huns, but... He's up against player who is named Bloodless. So I will call Yellow Bloodless throughout this game. I was thinking about changing the top to Bloodless because I could do that with my casting program. But I just find this so funny that Bloodless's account name was Lightcav OP. So Lightcav overpowered and Bloodless got Tootins who don't get Lightcav. <laughs> I mean, they went random Civ, right? They didn't pick civilizations here. Of all the different possibilities that we could have with all the civilizations in our game, the fact that like have OP got Tutans is pretty freaking funny. Now, these two know each other very well. And remember that time where I mentioned you have a lot of time on Arena? Well, they are under no immediate pressure right now. They're both going to be going Fast Castle. And so they have a taunt pack. I don't know the name of it. Um, it it's it's a taunt pack that John Sloan and his friends use. And uh, the little sound bites of different arena players and whatnot. It might be the clown sound pa sound pack or something. But they're like talking it up, right? And they're using these taunts. There's a bunch of different taunt packs. I think there's one that's like a thousand Arnold Schwarzenegger quotes. No. Anyways, if you search in the mod center, you can find them. Um. So, anyways, they're they're chatting it up, and you will see a lot of numbers as we kind of build up towards the next stage. They're just having fun, man. And like, listen, sometimes I feel like. People lose sight of that, right? Some people are like, winning is fun, right? But no, like, it's how you win the game that's fun. You know, sometimes, and these guys are having a good old time. Yes, they're high rank, but they're just playing with a chill attitude here. Um, no. So, you know, Bloodless said, you can't win. And Johnso said, I can and I will. You know why? Because I'm a sick player. <laughs> so, that's fun. So, um... With this time uh, that we have here, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the civilizations and, and their strengths. So, Teutons usually have, on a, on a map that doesn't start with stone walls, they have an issue with mobility. Um, they, they do not have very fast units. They do get uh, stable units, but they don't get husbandry, which means their stable units are slower than everyone else's stable units. So, it's generally a sieve that doesn't want to be reacting a lot of different spots. The Huns are pretty much the opposite. The Huns have faster producing stable units. They have great cav archers. Um, and they could they, their unique unit is a fast cavalry unit. So Huns want to be fighting in a lot of different areas. And they would be pressuring various points all the time. The problem for Huns on Arena is there's no hills to pressure, right? You, you can't really use mobility and attack two different sides at once because you're still just attacking a stone wall. So the Teutons can like take their time. The Teutons have very cheap farms. So they can take their time, focus on their economy, and get to a, a pretty good army comp. And Teutons are also really good on Arena because they have resistance to monks. And you very commonly will see monks on this map. So, you know, if you want to use monks yourself, you can do that and 
just win the monk war if you're converting the other monks out there. Um, but then you, you have great siege, great infantry. Their castles have lots of range. Like, the two in late game is truthfully one of the best. It's a bit interesting if you know competitive meta. Tutans aren't actually picked as frequently in, in arena-style tournaments. Now, I think there's reasons for that that have to do with the draft, and we don't necessarily have to get into it too much, but I think Tutans are one of the best arena civs, and let's just leave it at that. The Huns are just not. Like, I would maybe put Huns at, like, 25 out of the 44, 45 civs we have. Maybe that's a little unfair to the Huns, but... Uh, they just it, it, none of the bonuses that they have really feel strong for this map so what does that mean why am i telling you that i'm telling you that because john slow now needs to try and do something funky if he plays into a standard type of game where he's trying to go scouts into cav archers drops like three or four town centers adds a lot of eco to go late game that's the type of game that could suit the Tutans. Now, we've got a, a coin flip here. Both scouts are attacking at the same time. Only one scout will win. And the winner is... There you go. It was John Slow. John Slow gets the kill. Now, that's a pretty big deal. Because it doesn't matter how much HP your scout has when attacking him. Yes. Oh, God. Okay, I remember this. I was watching John Slow's stream. So, one of them paused. I think it was Bloodless. And during the pause, John Slow was just clicking taunts endlessly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man it's just i don't know what you guys have picked up on but there's definitely like some fun childish vibes between these two and i've enjoyed it they're definitely not taking things too seriously so i don't know when this will be uploaded on the youtube channel uh, i'm currently stocking up some content because i will be in germany for nac5 event my good friend neely's hosting it'll be on his youtube and twitch channel check it out between January 6th through... Oh, shoot. I should know the final date. I think it's the 14th. It might be the 15th. It's a Sunday. All right? Anyways. I want you guys to have some good content on the YouTube channel while I'm gone, and so I'm stacking some stuff up. But uh, I recently had my version of Capture Age updated. So at the bottom left now, we have a lot of the same stats we had before. But now resources collected is always present here. So let me know in the comments if you appreciate that. I still am going to toggle in to this screen. I, I find this very nice to see the breakdown. Um, I don't know. They're just more detailed. But then you can't see the game. So for now, that's what I'm, for now and going forward, we're going to have that on there. So it is common on this map to add scouts uh, to compete for the relics. And so we have a stable from... from um, it's actually confusing me. I didn't put Bloodless up here, but... Anyways, well, this is going to add some scouts. And John Slow. Some players are really smart. Or sorry, not really smart necessarily. But really safe with this. A lot of players, when they win a scout war like this, they will not have their scout out here. In fact, I'm surprised he's still scouting with it. Because he's pretty much scouted everything. If he's going to make a monastery, he could just bring that scout home and go heal that up so it's brand new. But guys, behind this, he's been on stone, right? So he's thinking about aggression. He's thinking about a castle drop, and those two ranges there will be making some cav archers, I'm sure. And Bloodless is going to send his scout around this way. He's got a couple of them out in the map. Remember, the later this goes, the better it is for Tutans. And John Slow sees he's been spotted, and he will run away, and he actually fights that. Maybe he felt like if he tried to run, Bloodless could have followed him in through the gate. I'm not really sure. He, that scout looked very willing to die. <laughs> yeah, there's there's the monastery. So, listen. Gonzo and I go way back. All right. I've been casting him since 2015, 2016, which honestly isn't way back as far as this game's concerned. And as far as Gonzo is concerned, he has been playing long, even longer than I have. But anyways, I can say this. That was not a good play. That scout should not have been out there. If you want to win this game, that scout could be helpful, but he's got bigger things to focus on. And the cab archers have been spotted. Now, behind this, we have TC number two for Bloodless. And uh, it's kind of interesting. 
You always need to have a blacksmith before a siege workshop. So he is adding this blacksmith, probably thinking he will need siege eventually. Because if the cav archers get massed, it can be really strong. And the cav archers should be able to kill the scouts as well. So this scout edition was something that, like, is, you know, the name alluded to. I think Bloodless is used to Arena being very scout and light cav heavy. He obviously doesn't get access to light cav. Just scouts. Here comes the first monk. Have archers masked. You can see Bloodless is looking. He sees this, but it's just four scouts, and there's big upgrades here on these cav archers right now. John Soul is really good at his like all in one TC plays. Man, I really hope they fix the pathing. Like some of this stuff is rough, dude. What what is that? Alright, it's been really frustrating playing the game the last two months and still hoping it don't even get me started on unit general unit control. But there we go. The scouts go in. This is not a venting time for myself. This is a cast. My mouth is officially shut. Um, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> um, we have a siege workshop now from John Slow, and John Slow wants to apply pressure because, again, later stages of this game, this is simply just not a good matchup. Has it been the cleanest play as far as Bloodless is concerned? Is, I think he's been a bit busier IRL, living life. Because he's been up around 2300 ELO months back. But maybe a little bit rustier by what's possible. But still pretty clean. Does have the villager lead now. But now sees a castle here. And this is this is pretty wild, right? It's a three villager castle, which feels so risky. Also, there's a siege workshop involved. Johnslow really trying to do a little bit of everything here. But that castle is now not going to go up at least... Not right now. It's going to take some time. And so Bloodless looking to move forward here. A couple conversions could be so helpful here for Bloodless. The villagers actually fight down the Scorpion. Have you ever seen a fight like this on Arena? Cav Archers getting converted by monks. Scouts killing villagers. And a castle at 17%. And definitely a John Slow moment. <laughs> this is This has looked so... Like, we could respect the fact that he had a plan, but the execution, not necessarily there. Only lost two villagers. Still has another villager over here. I'm sure she, the last thing she wants to do is build this, because all this foundation does is a reminder of her fallen comrades. But all of a sudden, maybe an opportunity. Look at that. The monks here getting picked off. A villager still trying to build that castle. And now she's dead. But, I mean, 12 to 6 KD for John Slow is something. This is where having res collected on screen is kind of nice. You can see that the resources collected, the difference isn't that insane. And bringing in relics does bring you in golden cum. So, you know, the, the golden cum is going to be there for John Slow with those relics. He's collected two relics behind this. Now, if you get to enough cav archers, you can take down mangonels. And so, John Slow maybe thinking he could do that soon. Adds his own mangonel here. Villagers come forward to finish the castle. And this is a lot of pressure right now. Like, there's a lot of things happening that need an immediate reaction here from Bloodless. So not a convenient feeling, or not necessarily feeling, but situation to be. A nice job there from Bloodless. Does repair the mangonel. The question now is, with two of them, does he try and stop this castle? He could maybe delete a piece of wall and go for the villagers again. These cav archers, though, are doing enough to keep the mangonel focused there. And yeah, castle's going to go up. Well, let's see how bloodless, he, how he damage controls. It, it's such a shame. As someone who's known for constant efficiency with farms, it makes me so sad that the farms here are in jeopardy now. Or in harm's way. It's such a painful thing. Check this out, though, guys. You notice how, like... I just love their game sense. Uh, like have OP here recognizes this is going to be one TC Imperial Age from his opponent. So he sells a bunch of wood to get gold. He'd been saving up the food and he clicks up to Imp. Such a good recognition of him. And I mean, then he, he's just transferred some villagers over to stone so he can think about a castle and then he can go for traps. Behind this, John Slow doesn't have as many villagers. Will have full map control and can get the relics. John So now clicks up to the Imperial Age. So, pretty interesting game. I said at the start I like Arena. I think the Arena games that I like are Arena games like this. 
Um, you have one player who clearly understands they need to do something different. Now, okay, okay, like two elite civilizations with elite strengths. That's also can be fun as well. But I think we maybe we see that too frequently. I don't know. I know like some of you guys have been watching my channel for years. Can any of you guys remember Huns vs. Teutons 1v1 on Arena on my channel? I'm actually thinking about this. Funnily enough, I think the one that comes to mind was a John Slow game. But I, I don't think I ever covered it. There's definitely something in my memory bank, though. So why do you go fast imp? Well, you go fast imp for Trebs. And uh, right now, it is crucial. It is critical for uh, Bloodless here. And man, note to self, I really need to put their names on the screen. But it's critical for Bloodless to be able to make Trebs in the next stage. While this is not doing that, while this is very paranoid and concerned the enemy could break through, added an outpost here for vision. Knows that this is where the enemy right, might run in, so is walling it up. All of that's smart. And John Slow has 20 cab archers, 5 relics at home, and getting ballistics now. When he sees his opponents in imp, he's probably like, crap. It's funny, I think it was Bloodless who said Civ win to Jon Slow at the start, but that was definitely not something he truly believed. He was not saying that Jon Slow's civilization was better. That was the joke, and every great joke has to be explained. Someone who's not funny once told me. <laughs> okay, so the monks will get block printing to go up to 12 range, which could be helpful. There is three Maganels here. Still no castle yet. I'm a little bit surprised with these resources being floated. I feel like you could maybe have seen some stone. We could have seen some stone purchase here. But <laughs> John Slow, I, I don't know what he was really thinking there. Just runs directly into three Meganel shots. And that is a real concern for him right now. That is, this is a unit type that is only getting stronger now. As we have chemistry coming in, we have Onager coming in. This is going to be a sie the siege weaponry built with much larger sticks or logs don't know where they get the rocks from never been able to figure that one out oh my goodness hold on a second that treb could take out that siege workshop before onager comes in i think oh shoot <laughs> no way okay it's getting repaired now i was gonna say that would be epic you don't have the glowing effect when you're playing the game that's just a casting thing just to remind us and onager comes in so currently right now sure it's very defensive here from bloodless but bloodless has collected around 2,000 more resources bloodless has a 20 villager lead so that's only going to continue and bloodless is going to have bombard cannons and onagers huns don't get bombard cannon huns don't get onager and right now it is only cav archers and trebs and john's so taunting him a little bit now i'm going to mention it now because there's going to be a point in the game where you, you really feel it, okay? Hun trebuchets have greater accuracy. Now, I don't remember. I think it's 50%, but that's why I have Hardy here. Shout out to that farmer who, with auto farm, just immediately goes back on a new farm. But that greater accuracy for Hun trebuchets, it can swing battles. So it is something to pay attention to. It's also interesting because it's not like 100% more accurate, so... You know, like Britons, for example, it's a common thing amongst arena players. So the Warwolf technology for Britons give you 100% accuracy. But that means it's harder to use Trebs against Bombard Cannons. Having a little bit of variance can actually be quite helpful. Anyways, Bombard Cannon already paying off. And, oh, monks are here. Onagers are there. Micro from John Slow did not impress me earlier in the game. And he has actually run through here, though. The monks have gone down. He's still got lots of units. You still have the Trebs firing. This is a messy situation. But Trebs able to get the shot there on the Onager. There's only one Onager left. The Bombard Cannons need more Onagers. And still not the best micro you've ever seen. But what are we talking about here? For Bloodless, we're talking about expensive units. And, well, suddenly no more Onagers on screen. Prenolations is now on the way, though. That's going to add additional range to the castle. Again, another tech that the students can get excited about. But, I mean, from the start, John Slow said, we must be aggressive. We must force the issue here. And he is trying. Onager comes out, though, and... This Treb still alive on this side. Another Bombard Cannon's on the way, and... It's a really tough game. 
everyone is uh better at different things. But I would say that Budless is is the better turtler of these two. John Slow, the better player with the all-in aggression style. But the micro, dude, the micro is just not. It's just not great, man. I just. <laughs> I would, I would love to be able to blame the current state of the game because recent patches have made it brutal. But <laughs> I I can't blame anything but John Slow there. <laughs> just, uh, maybe he got a little too excited because of what happened earlier, but that was not pretty. Anyways, that Bombard Cannon does go down. Bombard Cannons are pricey. Hunt Cav Archers are cheap. But Bloodless has continued to collect more and more resources, building up that critical mass. Because before, he only had like two or three onagers. Now he's got six. So now you need a counter. And all you tech tree nerds out there are like, well, T90 makes stable units, right? No. <laughs> Look at how frequently John Slow is buying stone. Like his whole eco, the only reason he's in the position he's in right now is because he hasn't had food eco. He hasn't invested wood into that. There's no switching at this point. You're stuck with what you're at. You, you max out with wood and gold, basically. And he just... It, it's its kind of funny, right? He backs up with the trebs. And for a moment there, Bloodless felt like, oh, I could actually push out. But he's a little worried to leave his walls right now. I actually think he's worried. He sees the knight and the Tarkin. And now another knight. He is actually concerned. And so he's going to go pikes. So uh, that's probably a big part of the reason he's waiting as well. Donso's micro did not instill confidence in anyone watching. But the trebuchets hitting a lot of their shots here. Castle for Donso does go down. Cav archers continue to go down as well. 52 villagers for Donso. It also takes a lot of time and energy and focus to balance your eco behind it. And when you're a lower APM player, you don't necessarily have the time for that. But hey, Trebs go down and Bomber Cannons go down again. These Trebs have been so valuable. And, you know, with Cav Archers being cheap and all, it's it's been it's been enough for John Slow to hold. And with having five Relics at home, that Golden comes coming in forever. And obviously, takes a couple more good trades. Another Bomber Cannon goes down. Maybe we'll start to believe for John Slow here in a moment. Onagers do need to be firing here. John Slow with the splits. And trebuchets now have been tasked onto the the uh onagers, excuse me. And it's really tricky for these onagers if they're standing still, and they're such a slow unit, right? So the trebs have actually been the strongest point of John Slow's attack. Also love how he has a couple monks healing up here as well. Preparing the trebuchets. These are all like tiny little things that. A lot of players don't do if they're not playing arena frequently. That cav archer mass is getting pretty ridiculous as well. Just runs in, runs out, runs to the side. Now another rock to the Manganel. Castle here has seven kills. Crenellations is pretty expensive though. I don't know if Crenellations is necessarily paid off. At the end of the day, you need to find an answer to push right now. Look at the damage dealt by these trebuchets. It's pretty ridiculous, right? It's such a cool stat to have. Looks like maybe a villager was killed at one point. Bloodless is concerned. He's got this bustling economy back here. And he looks at that too. You know, that, that takes away from certain aspects of his micro. Because he has to go home, seed some farms, put villagers on different tasks. But the Cav Archer mass, the cheap Cav Archers with the Huns, starting to really worry Bloodless right now. Again, that Pikeman edition earlier didn't really offer that much. And now the Onagers are almost gone, and John Slow feels like, I can push this now. And how many Bombard Cannons has he killed this game? I think the most created unit at the conclusion of this game for Bloodless might actually end up being a Bombard Cannon or an Onager. There's always that stat. John Slow, who realized the matchup was poor the, from the start, made something happen here. And it, it was just, just good enough. It's so interesting, like... I think a good comparison to other pro players. But John Slow is like kind of like Doubt, where um, now Doubt obviously is is way better, and you know, Doubt is is better on other maps. But when they recognize their win condition, and while they might be a bit slower at times, they're able to to find the right times. I think 
you might be thinking, T90, what would you recommend here then to um, to Bloodless? Like, what did he need to do differently? I honestly feel like he needed to turtle more. Like, the initial losses of the Monks and Onagers hurt him because then he needed to recover, then he got to five or six. But I think if he just... If he just chills out, waits till he has larger mass, gets to like 10 onagers, 10 pikes, I think that John Soul has no business being around. Now, the trebs are still going to be an issue, but it was like the amount of units that Bloodless made, like 13 onagers, really good. Um, however many bomber cannons were in there as well, really good, but I think he just needed to have a larger mass all at once. And also maybe the bomber cannons weren't that useful, but I think the bomber cannons were added in because of the trebs. It's easier to snipe the trebs with Bumber Cannon, so you can understand the thinking. Anyways, I thought this was a fun game. Um, definitely a different type of arena game. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this one. As I said, been very busy. Uh, was away with family for the holidays. Made sure that <clears throat> you guys continued to get great content to the YouTube channel. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I hope you have a great 2024. I hope it's been good already. And more videos coming all the time. Uh, I'm not going to promote this at the end of every video, but because it's been on my mind with everything I've been working on throughout my day, Hidden Cup 5 is coming. Uh, February 25th through March 3rd, we're going to have a live viewing party in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. 700 tickets available. Um, I, I mean, we'll have a viewing party in the UK. There's other things I'm working on. We're still a ways from Hidden Cup 5, but I wanted to let you guys know Maybe put it on your calendars. And if you don't know what Hidden Cup is, <clears throat> I've got a video you can check out on my extras channel. Um, what, what else did I want to look at here? I think that was pretty much it, right? We got everything out of the way. Thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, let's see. Fun stat of the game. Fun stat of the game is... Bloodless killed 68 units. But John Slow only lost 66. That's the fun stat of the game. Something happened here. Things went wrong. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to shut up sometimes. Thank you guys for watching. There's a video every day and a whole bunch of other ones you probably never saw before. See ya.